first of all, I would like to welcome you to Spain again in the name of the whole Max Metal staff. <laughs> Uh, and I'm going to Thank introduce you. myself and the website. My name is, and I'm a partner of Max Metal, which is a website that has been going on since 2001. And we will be at your concert in Barcelona in two days in order to make the report of the event. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to begin with a kind of a personal question. Uh, which singer influenced you the most when you began singing? Um, the singer that influenced me most changes, really, through the years. The most important singer was Ronnie James Dio. <laughs> when I saw him perform in Birmingham wow. <laughs> on the Holy Diver tour, yeah. and he sang Children of the Sea, one of his old Black mm -hmm. Sabbath songs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and when I saw that and heard that, that was the epiphany. That was the moment that my life changed. After that, mm -hmm. I wanted to be a singer in a band and mm -hmm. tour the world, I imagine, like Ronnie James Dio. I imagine it was so, incredible. <laughs> I, I was uh, a young man and watching him on stage and then I worked the night shift after that I went to work the night shift at the hotel where I used to work and um, I thought about it and I thought that is what I want to do mm -hmm. and that was the start really of my career in rock and heavy metal was seeing that but um, before knowing about Ronnie James Dio then Elvis Presley when I was a, a, a young boy, that was a big influence on me. And my grandmother was a fan of the great Italian tenor Mario Lanza. Mm -hmm. And that was an influence on me as well, I think. But in rock, first it is Ronnie James Dio. Then Bon Scott, mm -hmm. his delivery, the way that he talks the songs, and sings, he makes everything sound like a story for me that he's talking to you. And mm -hmm. I didn't want to sound like Bon Scott, but I wanted to be able to do what he did and make people feel as if I was telling them a story with my voice. And that was a, a, a big Mm -hmm. um, influence on me. Mm -hmm. Great, <laughs> sounds wonderful. And I would like to know also about your beginnings in Iron Maiden back in 1994, more or less. Uh, how did you realize that Iron Maiden was interested in you? Well, I was in Wolf Spain and I supported Iron Maiden with Wolf Spain for 33 sold out shows wow. <laughs> on the um, last tour that Iron Maiden did of theatres in England. And the European part of that tour was with Anthrax. I think it was the No Prayer for the Dying tour. And they knew me from then, but when they were looking for a singer, I got in touch and they already had my CD, which I gave them when we were on the tour. And I was very, very lucky that I got an audition with Iron Maiden. And for the audition, we had to sing 10 songs, which mm -hmm. are at that time the standard songs in the set. So Wrathchild, Trooper, Hallowed Be Thy Name, Number of the Beast. Uh, seventh Son, um, um, Clairvoyant, a few different ones from different eras. And I thought, well, I don't think I will get the job with Iron Maiden, but at least for one hour I will be the singer of Iron Maiden <laughs> in the rehearsal. So I just tried to enjoy the rehearsal as much as I could. Mm -hmm. I knew the songs very well. And it was um it went really well and they asked me back for a second audition 
and you had to sing in the studio so they could see how you were with recording and what your voice sounded like when you recorded. And it was very, very good. So I was very, very lucky mm -hmm. to have that opportunity. My voice is not like Bruce Dickinson. I'm very different as a singer. Mm -hmm. And I think perhaps that was why they chose me, because they wanted a big change. And Steve Harris found something in my voice that was different, something that he liked and he wanted to use. And what he found is the voice that is on um, Sign of the Cross and all of those other songs, that area of my voice that I didn't use before. And now I am on my Infinite Entanglement trilogy and I finished doing the three albums mm -hmm. and a big influence on my work on my Infinite Entanglement trilogy is all of the things I've learned from Steve Harris of Iron Maiden. And still there are some songs from those two records in my set now. It's 20 years ago since I was in Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. It's the anniversary <laughs> now of the virtual 11, but still I have a few of those old songs from my era in Iron Maiden. I'm very proud of the time mm -hmm. that That's I had. <laughs> and Iron Maiden has had a very big influence on my work. Now I have 10 albums of my own, and I'm very proud of these three albums that comprise of the trilogy. It's one big science fiction story told across three albums. And that has ha been influenced by what I learned in Iron Maiden musically and the songwriting things that I learned. So when I come to... Espana, I'm very, very excited to play many of my new songs from the trilogy, from the Infinite Entanglement trilogy, and a couple of my old Iron Maiden songs. Okay, <laughs> perfect. Uh, it seems that you answered <laughs> a lot. Uh, one of the questions that I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you about the set list you're going to play in... Uh, in Barcelona, you see. Well, we, we have done a new version. It is my own version of the old Iron Maiden song, Angel and the Gambler. Mm -hmm. We dusted that off. It's the 20th anniversary of Virtual Eleven, and we wanted to do something different. So we did that. And um, so far, fans have really enjoyed Angel and the Gamba, my version of it, with the Absolver Band. It's gone down fantastic. So um, it's been really, really good. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, you recorded two albums with Iron Maiden. Uh, what is the greatest experience or anecdote that you remember from this period? Well, I think that would be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing for me is learning from Steve Harris. Mm -hmm. He would have an idea in his head and then bring that into the rehearsal and show the band and then make it onto the album. And on my Infinite Entanglement trilogy... I have been able to do that too. I've been able to have the idea and say, this is a, a an idea about revenge. This is an idea about sorrow. This is an idea about taking back your life. Mm -hmm. And with each subject, I've been able to get the music and the emotion and the lyric to come together 
And that has really made it um, a very special journey on infinite entanglement. Mm -hmm. And that comes, I think, from working on Sign of the Cross and working on the Klansmen and Comestas Amigos and Judgment of Heaven and Virus. Working on all those songs and Future Real is another song that I worked on with Steve Harris. Mm -hmm. So that has all had a big influence on me. And I look back at those times and I remember the day that Steve Harris came into the rehearsal room with a bit of paper with some pencil notes on it. And he said, what do you think of this? And it was the Klansman. Mm -hmm. It was the rough version of the Klansman. It was absolutely fantastic. Wow. <laughs> and that is a beautiful, beautiful memory. And when I am working alongside Chris Appleton on my album and we have ideas, it really reminds me of those days. So that, that time was a, a, a very special time for me. And I remember being in Spain and in the UK at that time, the journalists said that Iron Maiden was over and Iron Maiden had no future anymore. But we were in Spain and we were playing in Zaragoza to 10,000 people. Mm -hmm. And we were playing to 11,000, 12,000, 10,000 people every night in Spain. And the Spanish fans still believed in I Maiden with me singing. And we really took great comfort from that. And so since those days, I've always wanted to play in Spain. And the reaction of the Spanish fans is absolutely wonderful. So I always enjoy coming to Spain and meeting the Spanish fans. Mm -hmm. So on every date of the tour of Spain, there will be a free meet and greet before every show. Mm -hmm. So Great. if you have your Iron Maiden records, your Wolf Spain records, my albums, bring come to the merch desk before the show, I will be there. And if you want a photo or a signature, mm -hmm. it is completely free. It's just you buy the ticket for the show and you get that meet and greet for free. Wow. I <laughs> will sign all of your uh, things for you. That sounds so great. <laughs> that is, as, a, as a thank you to all the Spanish fans who have supported me and believed in me for so many years, before every show in Spain, then I will be doing a free meet and greet, signing all the albums, no matter what. Oh, perfect. <laughs> it sounds great. <laughs> Thank you very much for uh, that detail. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you also about the fact that uh, in the last few years, uh, you have played in Spain several times. Uh, what do you like the most about your fans in Spain? Well, the fact that they are very good singers <laughs> and they choose to sing along with different parts of the songs to fans in other parts of the world. Yeah. The Spanish fans choose a thing and you go, well, that's very unusual. That anybody, I've never heard anybody sing that part of the song or <laughs> that part, that guitar melody. I think the Spanish fans are very musical mm -hmm. in that way. And of course, Spain has this incredible, rich, wonderful heritage of flamenco mm -hmm. and so, great so. guitar music from, you know, over hundreds and hundreds of years. So it always feels great to be able to come to Spain and in, in a country that has invented the guitar mm -hmm. to come with my music, which is mostly based around guitar and to be appreciated by the fans mm -hmm. is really, really cool. So I always look forward to coming to mm -hmm. Spain. 
Great. <laughs> Thank you for the compliments. <laughs> uh, well, uh, as you already said, uh, both albums you uh, you did with Iron Maiden were not really well accepted at the time because of the great change they supposed. Uh, how is it nowadays? Do people look at these albums with a different perspective, 20 years after? I don't know, but many people come to my shows and they say, the last time I saw you was 1996 or 1998. The last time I saw you was in Iron Maiden in, in Madrid or Zaragoza. So I think, well, that's very unusual because I have done a tour almost with every one of my albums. Mm -hmm. um, so it seems that uh, people are finding out about me again. And there are many people that know nothing about Waze Bailey. Mm -hmm. And they hear the X Factor album or Virtual Eleven album and they say, Bruce sounds very different on these albums. <laughs> and then they find out that it's a completely different singer. <laughs> and some people um, get interested in Blaze Bailey and in my work with Infinite Entanglement album and my first album after Iron Maiden, which was Silicon Messiah, mm -hmm. people get into that because they discover me for the first time after listening to the X Factor or mm -hmm. Virtual Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> and it seems now with the 20th anniversary of Virtual Eleven, mm -hmm. and there is so much great music on there with Klansman and future real that people are, uh, are thinking, well, maybe I'll listen to that album again. And because the X Factor and Virtual Eleven were the beginning of the progressive era for mm -hmm. Iron Maiden, yeah. I think people now listen to them very differently. After Brave New World and after you know, after a matter of life and death and and the all the other albums afterwards, then you go back and you listen to my two Iron Maiden albums mm -hmm. and you hear them differently because then you hear the influences and you hear the seeds of the beginning mm -hmm. of the progressive era yeah. of mm -hmm. Iron Maiden. For me, with my music, I am more traditional. I haven't really changed my music mm -hmm. it's still heavy metal it's not progressive it's big melody on the guitar lots of big guitar melodies lots of big songs and choruses and i try to make the lyrics make sense and make them interesting and tell a story so when you listen to the Blaze Bailey album, in comparison to what Iron Maiden do now, it's like listening to the values of an earlier Iron Maiden mm -hmm. before the big, long songs. So where my songs are more in the style of Future Real and Man on the Edge and things like this, mm -hmm. then it's a different way of looking at it. So many fans really like both. They like yeah. Blaze Bailey for the heavy metal side of it, for the more traditional British heavy metal, and they like Iron Maiden for this huge progressive, these fantastic big arrangements, these huge ideas that they have. So it's very nice when people discover Blaze Bailey. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Um, almost 20 years have passed since you left Iron Maiden, finally. Uh, at the current time, how do you value the experience of being the Maiden singer? I think without being the singer of Iron Maiden for those two albums, recording and writing with the band and then performing the songs that I wrote with Iron Maiden live, then I think Blaze Bailey would be very, very different. So mm -hmm. it's been a big 
influence and on my Infinite Entanglement trilogy, there are many times now when I look and I go, you know what, that song is like that because I was in Iron Maiden. Mm -hmm. So the on the YouTube channel, there is a song called Prayers of Light, which is the first song that we chose from my new album, The Redemption of William Black. And that song, Prayers of Light, you can really feel the Iron Maiden influence on that, I think. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, now, uh, we're going for a tricky one. <laughs> If you were offered an invitation or something like that to an Iron Maiden concert in order to sing some of the, some of the songs from your period, would you accept? Yes. They only have to ask. There's no bad feeling at mm -hmm. all be, from my side. I am very happy with everything that I did. And for me, it would be wonderful for the fans. Mm -hmm. I think fans would absolutely love that, that idea. And mm -hmm. people would discuss it and argue about it. And probably the people that hated me 20 years ago still hate me and they will fight with the people that love me now so I think it would be a lot of fun for one of the anniversaries to do something like that it would be very interesting would if you funny. could have the three singers on stage it would be a lot of fun definitely would be funny <laughs> yes uh, on the other hand Uh, your, your other band, Wolf's Bane, is still active and released a new album in 2012. But, however, since then, nothing more has been published. Do you have uh, any future plans where Wolf's Bane is involved, or will you keep going only with Blaze Bailey's band? Yes, we, got, we had a Wolf's Bane reunion last year in December, Then Wolfsbane played six shows, mm -hmm. and we are going to play seven shows this December, and we are working on new material. So we hope to have a new Wolfsbane album or EP out mm -hmm. um, next year. Um, we're very, very positive. We have some song ideas left over from our last album um, that we didn't use. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing that. So please look out for Wolf Spain. Mm -hmm. It's wolfspainhms.com. And I also put news about Wolf Spain on Facebook official Blaze Bailey. So please keep a look out there and we'll tell you what we're up to. But there are mm -hmm. seven shows in the UK this year in December with Wolf Spain and we're all very excited about it mm -hmm. and we hope to have a new EP mm -hmm. ready nice, nice by to hear then. About the it. last <laughs> things that we did were Wolf Spain Saves the World and Wolf Spain Rock. Mm -hmm. So we're very excited about the next Wolf Spain project. Great. It's new uh, it's uh, it's always great to it's always nice to uh, hear about news from uh, Walls Vein 2. Uh, but now, uh, your band is now presenting uh, its new release, The Redem Redemption of William Black, the third of the trilogy of Infinity uh, Entanglement. Uh, what will the, uh, the Blaze Bailey fan find in this album? The Redemption of William Black is part three of my trilogy and it is the ending of the story of this character that starts a journey of a thousand years. He does not know if he is human mm -hmm. and he has done many bad things in his past that he wishes to atone for and on part three this is where he finds his redemption on a new world with the indigenous population 
he becomes a brother of those people because the new conquistadors from Earth planned to obliterate all intelligent life. They only want genetically perfect DNA on the new world. And so William Black decides to become the champion and the hero of the Indians and defend them and fight alongside them against the new conquistadors. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> Sounds an interesting story, <laughs> with no doubts. <laughs> That's great. Um, as I have noticed, uh, your band usually changes its lineup practically in each tour. Uh, what's the reason for that? Well, I've had the same band for the last five tours and five albums. I've been working with Chris Appleton and the Absolver band on the last five tours. And So far, fans have really enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. Having the same band all of the time, and these are the musicians that have played on each one of my new albums, the three albums from Infinite Entanglement, Part One, Endurance and Survive, Part Two, and The Real. Redemption of William Black, part three. Mm -hmm. The band that is on tour with me are the musicians that played on the album. And we've done five tours together and fans across Europe and USA have really enjoyed having the same guys. And now I don't really work with outside musicians at all. I've got enough to keep me going with this band. So okay. it's great to be able to tour together with the same guys. They're very hard working. And for all of us, we have the same values. It's not a party, it's heavy metal. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is the music. And that's how we all feel about it. No one drinks alcohol before the concert. No one gets trashed on whiskey and drugs. The most important thing is the music and performing well for the fans that support us. I am completely independent. I'm not with any record company. Mm -hmm. The people that support me are my fans directly. When they order from my website, when they pre-order my album, when they buy my T-shirts, when they buy my CDs, when they buy the concert tickets, that is how I continue. I'm not supported by anybody else. So the fans have a very special place in my heart, and I think my fans are the best fans. They understand that I'm in.